Well, it's time to start chipping the tiger. And I use this Windsor Newton 00 brush. Now I've used this brush for a couple of years. And it's it's an expensive brush, but I take pretty good care of it. And so it's still very serviceable. And hopefully I'll be able to use it for another year or so. And I think the secret to that is using some good brush cleaner whenever I'm done using it. So whenever I'm done with a session of chipping, I use this brush cleaner and preserver and clean it really well. Make sure I have the, the tip point, you know, sharpened up real good. And then I put the protective cover back on the brush. And that's worked pretty well for me for keeping this brush in good condition. I'm going to start the chipping with this Dunkel Gelb Highlight. It's quite a bit lighter than the base color Dunkel Gelb. And that'll be my starting point for my chips. After laying down the chips with this Dunkel Gelb Highlight, for the bare metal areas, I'll use this Vallejo German Black Brown for the metal chips. And on very few instances where I'm going to try to replicate peeled paint or flake paint, not chip paint, I'll use a little bit of this red brown primer. But there won't be a lot of that, but there'll be instances where I use it. All right, so it begins. My paint, I have five drops of paint. Uncle Galb Highlight. I have one drop of Retarder. And I have two drops of water. Now this will last me a while, but I'll have to refresh this pot a few times because this is a this is a long process. It always takes me always takes me a couple minutes to get get the rhythm down. Now with this Dunkel Gelb highlight color, the chips show up well on this Dunkel Gelb base color. All right, well, I'm going to continue on with this, and I'll catch you up after a bit. Well, I have the initial chips on the top of the turret. Now I'll move to the side of the turret, start chipping. Well, I'm getting ready to start chipping some of the Zimmerit, and I'm using this MIG Zimmerit Ochre Color. All right, took some of the MIG Zimmerit and I thinned it with a drop of water.
All right, so now I'm going to take some of the Zimmerit, just a little bit, and I'm going to get it really thin. I don't know. Knock down this primer red. Now, my thinking is there would be some residual zimmerit clinging to that primer, you know, to the to the turret. Since it's put on with a trowel, it's like a masonry product almost. And so there'd be a little bit of residual zimmerit clinging to the metal. Time to start working on the spare tracks. And I'm using some Vallejo light rust initially. And I've made it very thin. This paint's pretty thick out of the bottle, so I've thinned it down considerably with some water. And I'm just going to blot it on. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll put on the next layer of color. I'm going to take some Vallejo German Black Brown right here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Gonna blot it on, get it, get it thin. And it might take a couple of applications of this to get the look I want, but I don't want the paint too thick. Just blot it on, let it do its thing. All right, I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then I'll give it another application. All right, so applying the black brown again. You know, I want some of that light rust to peek through a little bit, but you know, overall, I want the the track to be fairly dark. I think this this is going to do it. I'm going to let that fully dry and see how it looks. And if I like it, then we can move on to the next step. Okay, tracks are looking pretty good. You can see they're a little bit modeled like, like I would like them to be. And you can also see some of the light rust has settled down in the corners where if there was 
rust, it would wash into the corners. So that looks good as well. So I'm, I'm pleased with the tracks. I think they look good. Oh, time to get started on the hull. You know, you figure hatches and traffic patterns, you know, where a crew would walk. Some of the most likely to chip, you know, is the edges of the paint for hatches. You know, and also the surrounding area where the crew would walk. I have the first session of the hole done and I have the hole done the front and right about here and that took me two hours You know, another thing about Tigers is these were high maintenance vehicles. So the covers back here, the engine covers, would have been removed fairly often. So, you know, there were certainly opportunities for the paint to be chipped as panels were moved, removed, and replaced. And the edges, the edges of panels would be, the edges and corners would be the areas most likely to be chipped since those were the areas that would have the most wear. And you know when I'm doing this, I mean this is a tank like this, a model like this, there's no way I'm going to do it in one day, it would just be too much. But. And you know some days some days go better than others. Some days when I'm doing chipping, it just looks pretty horrible. But I don't, I don't get too worried about it because I can just, the areas I hate, I'll just go back over it with the base color and just cover it up. So, if you're starting out and trying chipping, don't get frustrated. You can just take your base colors, and if you get an area that you don't like, well, you can just go back and touch it up. I believe I have the hole chipped. I'll look things over before I apply the clear coat. But I believe I have it for the most part. Like I said, I'll look things over just to make sure.
and nothing's been done on the undercarriage yet. That'll all get dirtied up with some enamels later. Alright. I'm going to do a little bit of painting on the mufflers. And I'm going to start with a little bit of a little bit of gray, light gray. I'm going to use a sponge for this. Blot a, blot a lot of the paint off. Now what I'm thinking here is, as the exhaust gets closer to the outlet, it becomes less hot. And so some of the Dunkelgeld paint will still be on the muffler. And so I'm using this sponge method up here to leave some of the dunkel gelb. All right, step one. Step one, I have the gray on it. Second part, painting the muffler. Using a little bit of Vallejo Orange Rust. Still using my little piece of sponge. That's about right. A lot of this is going to be covered up with darker layers of rust. That looks pretty good. Next I'm going to use some of this Shaco Brown for a darker heavy rust on the mufflers. Alright. So that looks pretty good. For the last step with the mufflers to apply this light rust wash. All right, and that should about do it. I'll give it a, an hour or so to dry, and then I'll show it to you again. All right, the mufflers are finished, and the last step for these will be after they're painted with a flat varnish. I'll use some black pigment and go around the top and the edge here with black pigment. But other than that, the painting is done. All right, I got my exhaust shroud or my exhaust cover here. I have it chipped and I chipped it along the creases where the damage is, the dents in the cover. And in these areas, I'll use rust. I'll use some black brown and rust inside these creases here. But in this area here where the metal is undamaged, well, I'll just use it as peeling paint and I'll put some red primer inside the chips. All
All right. So there I have it chipped. I got the primer coming through. And now I'm going to move on to the dark rust on these creases. Alright, I think that'll do it for that. Well, now it's time for the rust wash. And this is it's very thin. I'll apply this over the over the dark rust. So I think that's good. So I'll let that dry for an hour and uh, take a look at it and see how it looks. So the exhaust is ready for a clear coat. Now I marked these armor covers, I marked this one left because the, the paint will have to match up with the shroud. But you won't see that. And I think I've reached a point in this this model project where you know I just want to get the chipping done because it seems like I've been doing it for forever, which I have in some regards. I think this is the the fifth evening I've been doing it, so I'd like to get it done. All right, well, I'll continue on. Get these road wheels finished up. I still have to come back and put in the black, brown, dark rust and metal chips. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all the all the chips mapped out with this Dunkel Gelb highlight. And once that's done, I can come back and put in the metal chips. It's time to apply the satin varnish. Now by applying this varnish, it closes the book on the on the chipping segment of the weathering process. And I'll let the varnish cure for 24 hours before proceeding to the next step. All the parts have been sprayed with satin clear. And that pretty much ends this part of the weathering process. The chipping's done. I did some painting of the tools. And I'm going to go ahead and close this video out here. I want to thank you all for watching. And I hope you join me next time when we continue on with the weathering process, starting with the pin wash. Thanks again for watching.